We're here at the uh, Mobile Labs Forum 2011, and we are joined by Mike Roberts. Mike, from Informa, actually. Yeah, sorry about mm -hmm. that. Mike, right. welcome uh, to Telesemana. Thank you. So you've been at the show since yesterday, mm -hmm. Mobile Labs, very mm -hmm. interesting topic for Latin America. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, could you share with us what have you been hearing, what is you know, the, the concepts that you're taking back home, the mm -hmm. conclusions that you are, we still have the afternoon today, but you know, so far we have covered 75% mm -hmm. of the show, so. Mm -hmm. What are the conclusions so far? So it's, uh, as you know, it's a very important uh, segment of the market uh, for operators in Latin America and globally. Um, uh, data revenues are where all the growth is, as I'm sure you know. Uh, voice revenues are declining, and so we define mobile bass as basically everything apart from mobile voice. Um, it started with messaging, of course, and music downloads, but what we're starting to see here is operators starting to get uh, more innovative services, whether that be supporting the mobile social networks. Um, the mobile internet is another big category that's growing in our forecasts, sort of obviously in the one sense, but in Latin America where smartphone penetration is below 10%, uh, it is actually a little bit difficult for some subscribers to access the internet via their mobile, so operators are doing interesting things to provide more people on more devices um, access to the internet. Um, and I guess uh, looking at the big picture, we do forecasts on the region, of course, and um, our recent forecasts do show the mobile vast market in Latin America doubling. Uh, from 2009 to 2014, from you know 10 billion in 2009 to more than 20 in 2014. So there's obviously a, a huge growth opportunity. I think the big challenge is uh, growing this segment of the market faster than voice is okay. declining, which is you know kind of uh, running on the uh, on the moving sidewalk kind of challenge for operators. Okay. L yesterday we were having a discussion with eBuddy, mm -hmm. uh, the company that has this stand over there, mm -hmm. and uh, there's bit of a debate on, on, on the role of SMS in the future, mm -hmm. right? We're seeing services like iMessage from Apple, we're seeing the WhatsApp, the over-the-top application that you download into a smartphone and you can mm -hmm. use kind of an SMS type of service for free. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we're seeing, we used to say that SMS was kind of untouchable, that mm -hmm. nobody w was going to be able to kill SMS because, mm -hmm. you know, it was very useful and cheap and so on. Yep. But now we're having alternatives that are even cheaper yeah. and as useful. Mm -hmm. What do you think about uh, this trend of having an SMS type of service that is almost kind of free if you have a data mm. plan with the operator. I think it's dangerous. I mean, we, we've all, uh, for many years, we've been talking about the threat to SMS from originally it was IM instant messaging, and now it's kind of moved on to uh, more advanced sort of internet-based services that could potentially cannibalize SMS. And yeah. the problem is um, these services are better. Um, are better than SMS? They, no, sorry, they're better than the, the previous threats, okay. and and they they are more of a threat. And I think um, again, we track um, you know uh, data points in the market. One of them being SMS, and in the first quarter, uh, or actually in the fourth quarter of 2010, was the first time we saw SMS per subscriber per month in Latin America level off. Um, so it stopped growing, and. Partly that's because the subscribers are leveling off and so you don't have you know, as many subscribers coming on. But when you look at, and it's the mix of subscribers, particularly when you look at SMS per subscriber uh, per month, but it's also because there are other you know, solutions out there that um, can have a lower price point. Um, in Latin America, uh, BlackBerry Messenger, as you well know, has long been and very, very a threat, popular. very popular in region. And some of these new solutions are you know, similarly compelling, um, we think. So I think it's a, you know, a major threat because messaging is the dominant mobile vast category, as you know, and yeah. operators really have to protect it and innovate to make the services more interesting and more useful. So w what sort of protection can the oper I mean, because we are talking, I don't know, you, you probably have figures on that, but mm. we can see operators having 20% of the revenues coming fr directly from SMS. Yeah, uh, That's a huge amount of revenue that could be lost, and we've seen how fast this industry mm. shifts <coughs> sometimes. I mean, in a matter of five years, maybe one service might be completely destroyed. Yeah, I'm not saying that that's going to happen to sure. SMS, but you know, we, we sometimes it's kind of unexpected. We are very young. Absolutely. Uh, so sometimes we don't know what's, what's going to happen in terms yep. of timing. Mm -hmm. What's the protection uh, strategy for operators at this it's, point? It's tough. I mean, it's a very good question because, um, you know, it is a massive service and we are in a new era, um, basically. I don't think anyone in the industry wants to see 
huge revenue streams disappearing overnight. Um, overnight. But the, the, the best, when, when operators ask this sort of question, we typically advise, you know, it's very hard to hit a moving target, right? If you have an SMS service that's basically been the same service for 10 years or more, that's a pretty easy target for Somebody you know someone to come in and target person. and lower the price or make it a little bit better. But I guess, for example, um, I'm sure you saw uh, Vivo presenting on Cantu, um, you know, a, a sort of you know a mobile platform for learning English, right? So what does that have to do with SMS? Well, that is a, you know an innovative service that people like running on top of SMS. Um, you know, not exclusively, but it definitely is. And so, you know, if you're, you know, providing new and interesting services on top of this old platform, I mean, you're a much harder target, um, you know, to hit as far as the, uh, you know, the upstarts with new solutions. So, so at the end of the day, we go back to the innovation factor or mm. component, which is kind of an open uh, scenario. I mean, when yeah. you say when operators need to be innovative, uh, mm. it seems like, okay, you know, so what, what does that mean, no? Yeah. Uh, so it means things like that. You have a service that 14 years you haven't touched. Yeah. And has reached, we've reached a point where now it's, it's a moment to, you know. Yeah, and, and I was probably overstating a little because, you know, as you know, SMS has evolved. The messaging has evolved, you know, quite a lot to include voice components. Yeah. And obviously there's MMS and, uh, you know, which is not a huge, huge service. But there has been, you know, constant innovation. I think that now more than ever there is more incentive you know to kind of just up that level of innovation and, and probably work quite a lot harder um, than operators have in the past to make sure that you know that service is more interesting and more compelling uh, than the competition um, because I you know to be frank about it there was no competition in that segment yeah. for many years and I think there now is more competition and you know operators really can't afford um, you know, to let those services be too stable and, and stagnant, basically. Okay. Let's go to another service that I think mm. uh, it's kind of a major theme at this show, which mm. is the mobile banking or mm. mobile wallet or mobile money. Or you, mm -hmm. you name it because, you know, mobile banking probably is a very wide uh, sure. also definition. And, yeah. and we've seen that there are different segments within the mobile money space. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me what, what are you seeing here because I think there's, there's different components to take into account. Security is definitely one. Mm. Regulation probably is another one. Definitely. So I, I don't know if those two components are the two major things that need to be tackled before operators can actually mm -hmm. have a really compelling mobile banking solution beyond checking your account within, with your phone. So I don't know what, what's your Yeah, take? absolutely. I think, you know, uh, the banks are very worried about security, obviously, as we are when our sort of money is involved. Um, and the regulation, as you say, is critical because um, you need a bank as a partner. Um, in most markets, the regulations require a banking license, which means you need a bank as a partner, uh, which means both the bank and the mobile operator need to be motivated to do it. Mm -hmm. Then they need to come up with a business model. And, uh, you know, this is one of our largest segments in our forecasts in five years, but it's a slow burn um, in a lot of cases. The, you know, the, the poster child of mobile banking is M-Pesa in Kenya, as you know. Um, one of the things that, you know, apart from the huge demand um, and, you know, an even larger unbanked population than you have in many countries in Latin America, one of the critical factors for such rapid take up was the regulations there are fairly lax. So they did not need a bank as a partner right. and the operator could just move forward on their own with their own ideas, a lot less complexity. Um, and that, unfortunately, is not the case in a in lot many. of other markets. Yeah. Uh, and so, by all means, it's a critical segment, but regulation um, and the security uh, are key issues that just basically have to be worked through and will, you know, slow uh, the development of the market, but it will be a large market in time, basically. Okay. Just, you know, just to clarify, because when we talk about mobile banking and, and mm -hmm. how hot the market is, uh, we're basically t talking about very simple things, maybe micropayments or, or mm -hmm. checking balance, mm -hmm. uh, but when we're going to go to the full-blown mm. security and regulation, are two things that need to be addressed. Absolutely. I think. So Absolutely. I don't know, you know yeah. when we hear, hear providers saying we have a mobile, you know, we have different providers here saying mm. or stating that they have a mobile banking solution. Mm. At the end of the day, even if the technology is great, even if uh, you know these guys are able to prove that they have, you know, whatever they can offer to the operators, that yeah. is fine. If you don't have in place a regulation that states who is responsible for what, when, you know, 
money is stolen, there is fraud, or, or whatever. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. And, it, and that is, you know, a lot of the, the critical components that take a long time to work out. It takes a long time for the bank and the mobile operator to do a deal, you know, to figure out who's responsible, for what? you know, for what. And, you know, if something goes wrong in what is a very serious area, you know, who kind of uh, carries the can, um, as it were. And it's, you're exactly right that mobile banking is a very big word, you know, there is, you know, this huge list of services, everything from a basic money transfer to, you know, a sort of, you know, credit card type services that, in, you know, that are a lot more involved. So yeah. it's, it's one of those ones that's, um, you know, almost difficult to talk about because many people use it in many different ways depending on which part of the ecosystem they're in. You know, obviously you have mobile banking services here already, whether it's Oipago and Brazil and others, um, you know, that have started the ball rolling, but we haven't seen any real blowout success like the uh, the M-Pesa example, which, let's face it, is fairly unique globally. Um, so it's not uh, any particular issue here in Latin America. It's more particularly favorable issues there. Okay, and just to finalize, things that I haven't heard here are mm -hmm. things like mobile video. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've heard something. Mm -hmm. uh, supposedly, when I when I look at international research from informal from mm -hmm. different companies, uh, mobile video is also on top of the list. Yeah. Uh, but when I come to uh, shows like this for Latin America, mobile video doesn't seem to be that high on the list, or at least it's not that hard in terms of mm -hmm. messaging and mobile ranking. I, th I think are dominating. Uh, it's true. This this kind of discussions here. So I don't know. Yeah. If there are other services that we're seeing other markets like mobile video mm. that so far in Latin America either because of the phones, either because of the mm. networks, or either because of whatever, yeah. uh, cannot be successful yet. It's very true. We um, just finished a research uh, project looking at mobile bass across emerging markets. It's, uh, you know, mobile bass is a transformational tool is the report we've just, uh, just put out this month. And we actually went looking for, you know, those kind of video services and the more advanced services, but they're not you know, there to a large extent in emerging markets, simply for some of the reasons you mentioned, you know, largely they require advanced devices and penetration of smartphones in Latin America is 10%. Um, that's an interesting percentage, but it's not enough of a percentage to, you know, build the new service yeah. on. And, and similarly, um, a lot of operators just aren't sure about mobile video, particularly in Latin America, where a lot of operators have a limited amount of spectrum. And the one thing we've certainly seen from AT&T in the U.S. or other operators is there's nothing like mobile video for filling network. up your network, yeah. you know, taking all your spectrum yeah. and uh, basically causing problems uh, that a lot of operators don't want. So I think understandably operators in Latin America and other regions are being very <laughs> careful about mobile video and how they introduce it and also being very careful about how they try and control over the top mobile video from, you know, YouTube. ruining their networks, YouTube, Netflix, yeah. um, all these services that can, you know, that can kill mobile networks if, if usage does take off. So uh, we're definitely seeing operators tread very carefully, uh, understandably, on that, that sort of service. Okay. Well, Mike, thank you so much. One of the things that we are going to uh, reserve for the next conversation would be mobile marketing and mobile advertising, mm -hmm. which I think is another thing that has been touched upon here. Yeah. Not very... Uh, Very good point. Strongly, yeah. but you know, some people have just slide it here mm -hmm. and there. Uh, so I think next time we can talk about it because I don't think it's that hot at this point in the show. I, don't, I might be wrong. You've been on the conference probably more than me. No, you're exactly right. It's one of the things that people always talk about in Mobile Bass, yeah. but it hasn't. It's never there. It hasn't taken yeah. off, and yeah. it will have to be there for operators because that's the another solution to declining voice and. SMS revenues, but it's not there yet. But operators have to figure that out, absolutely. Okay. So partnerships probably are going to be one of the key words that we need to hear in these kind of shows, because operators cannot obviously be everywhere. No, they definitely can't do advertising revenues on their own, because exactly. they've tried before and it, it didn't work. Well, but basically. imagine if you have to be on, on figuring out mobile video, you have to be on mobile banking, you have to mm. be on mobile advertising, you have to be on location, you have to be, and it's kind of tough if you don't have absolutely. a good set of partners that are, you know, and that's one of the key skill sets for operators and many in the ecosystem now is the ability to, you know, identify the opportunity, create the appropriate partnerships, and capitalize on the opportunities. Okay, Mike, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Pleasure having you here. Thank you. And I'll see you next time. See you.